Matt Hulquist here with QuickBooks University. Hey, I wanted to show you how to enter a bill in QuickBooks 2018. And I know this sounds uh, simple and straightforward, but I can't tell you how many times people do this wrong. And uh, if, you're, if you're truly using QuickBooks to understand your business and to guide your business, you need to do this, all right? Okay, so the first error that people make is they don't enter their bills, okay? So they may just keep the bills in a, you know, a folder and just track the due date and just pay them and then record the payments, okay? Don't do this, okay? QuickBooks offers a very powerful function to enter the bills and track them and track the due dates and pay them. And when you follow the process of entering bills and then paying bills, Okay, you're going to get accurate financial statements. And that's really the point of keeping your books is to have those accurate financial statements so you can use them to make business decisions. Um, it will increase the odds of your success in business so much. Um, I can't even tell you how much, uh, but it will increase your odds. Okay. All right, so here's what we want to do. There's a couple of ways here. Obviously, there's a button here that says enter bills. Pretty straightforward. Okay, you can also go to vendors and enter bills. All right, so we'll just click here, enter bills. All right, so here's the important thing that you want to make sure that you do when you enter a bill. Okay, so let's pick a, you know, pick a vendor. Doesn't matter. See you electric. Okay. The first important thing that you need to do is the date, okay? It's going to default to today's date or whatever the date is that you uh, are entering the transaction, all right? First of all, you need to enter the correct date, and this is going to be the date of the bill, all right? Why do we put in the date of the bill? The reason is, is because the date of the bill is when usually that transaction happened. Okay, so let's say the date of this bill was November, all right? So what's the difference between November and December 15th? Well, if we pull up a profit and loss statement and we show utility charges electric as an expense, if we record the date of the bill on an accrual basis financial statement, it's going to show in November. But if you put in December, it's going to show in December, okay? So if the charges happened in November, and the expense happened in November, you want that recorded in that time period. So this is extremely important is putting in the right date, which generally is going to be the date of the bill and it's stated right on the bill. Okay. Reference number again, vital. You put this in, this is going to be the invoice number. All right. Now, some things like, you know, electric companies and things like that don't necessarily have invoice numbers. Uh, but you know, 99% of other vendors do have invoice numbers and you want to put that in there as well. Now, here's why. A lot of times vendors, especially smaller companies, will send a duplicate invoice on accident or maybe just send it again. You know, you never know. Um, when you put in the invoice number and you consistently do that, if you put in a duplicate invoice number, QuickBooks will alert you to say, hey, this invoice number is already in there. Uh, is this a duplicate? And I see all too often where companies uh, will double pay a bill on accident only because it's too hard to track when you have that many bills coming in and they don't put in an invoice number. Okay. So you want to put in the invoice number. Okay. Uh, amount due $55. And then obviously the due date you're going to put in there. All right. And if you have a discount date, you can do that and you're going to put in the terms. Now the account, uh, of course, you're going to pick the appropriate account, $55. And if you are uh, billing this to a customer or assigning a class, then you can put that in, in there as well. All right. So those are the basics of putting in bills the right way in QuickBooks. You know, so first of all, make sure you do it. And second of all, uh, put in the right date, put in the right reference number, which is the invoice number and you should be good to go. But if you do this consistently, you're going to get correct financial statements, which in turn will allow you to make sound business decisions. All right. 
My name is Matt Holtquist. I'm with the QuickBooks University. Uh, head on over there at qbuniversity.org. Uh, we've got 45 uh, training videos plus 12 advanced videos uh, to show you how to record various transactions, pretty much all transactions in QuickBooks 2018. Uh, and it's they're really designed to help you get your business up and running, get the right financial statements so that you can increase your odds of success. We'll see you over there at qbuniversity.org.